Here I have this ATX computer power supply that I featured in one of my YouTube shorts. Um, and in that YouTube short, I said if that video got 50 likes, I would blow this up. LNC switching power supply, 250 watt. And I found this in a computer on the side of the road. Now what initially raised my concerns for this was that the input circuit board here, the contacts were way too close to the top of the case, as you can see, and not in my ownership, but whoever previously owned it did have a bad experience. And if we see inside, it's pretty basic and it doesn't look incredibly well built. Here we do have a fuse. There is a kind of seized fan. Some of the capacitors swollen and some of them are leaking. Pretty dusty. The heat sinks are rather small, but again, this isn't really a high powered power supply. So you can only guess what I'm going to be doing today. Firstly, we'll stick that back on there because I don't want to blow myself up. This is the only cable of this type that I've ever seen that's white. All of the others are black. Okay. okay, so it's making a high pitch noise. You can probably hear that coming through. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Could be a coil wine. Um, I have a Dell Precision 670 that when it's cold and you plug it in, the power supply makes a hissing noise, but it goes away after a while so that could be what this is and here's a trick if you ever want to test an old computer power supply um if it's plugged in and turned on you still won't be able to get any power out of it because it's in standby mode so what you want is a small piece of wire this is some solder and you want to bridge the green wire here with any black wire so i'm just going to bridge the adjacent pins We are getting close to 12 volts. If it was 2000 and I was the owner of this power supply, I would not be happy about that noise coming out of my computer. There we go. All right, it's been five minutes and the power supply has not given up yet. Firstly, I'm going to try a short circuit test. Alright, so it looks like the power supply just turns off and the fan spins up once again when I turn the power back on. And by the looks of it, the 12 volt rail has a maximum current of 9 amps. So let's try with this tiny little can fridge. It's made to cool down a single can of drink using a Peltier module in the base. Now originally this was made for 5 volts so I stripped the wires and connected the Peltier modules to this terminal block um, so I can power it off 12 volts and I also added a fan that can withstand the higher voltage and yes it still doesn't work very well. Well, the power supply doesn't even turn on. That's not a good start. Let's try it one more time. Yep, I was not expecting that. There we go, fixed. And this is what a Peltier module looks like. These are pretty cool. When voltage is applied, they create a temperature difference on the two sides. Yep. So one side gets hot and the other gets cold. But don't believe the lies they tell you on YouTube. You can't make a fridge and you can't make an air conditioner out of these. 
they're just too weak and inefficient to do that. At most you'll be able to cool an esky sized box with this. And I mean cool, not refrigerate. So it's good for drinks but not storing food. Let's see what happens when we hook this up. I'm expecting it just to make it pop because this is direct current. I'm going to put two of these speakers in series and see what happens. Even that was too much for this power supply. Let's do the maths. So these two speakers in series were reading 8 ohms for the pair. Um, and that equates to 18 watts total. So I'm really not sure what's going on here. If this power supply is just weak and can't handle the rated power output. Not because it's terrible but probably also because of that. But just because it's old, worn out, you saw the condition inside. Um, there's leaky capacitors inside. Maybe those are taking some of the current because they're shorted or something, I'm not sure. I'm going to see what happens if I bridge two power rails together. Five volt and 12 volt power rails. Molex connectors are great for testing. Nothing. Little light bulb made in japan it's 12 volts 8 watts and it immediately turns off i suppose i could load down the 5 volt rail instead and see what happens and by the noise coming out of the speaker you can tell that the DC power supply isn't very well filtered at most 25 degrees which is pretty normal now there are two speakers connected to the 5 volt rail I know if you push on a speaker you're able to generate current so I wonder if I'm able to possibly damage the power supply by pushing the speakers um, in order to back feed current into it at a higher voltage. Let's see if the... Doesn't look like it's doing anything unfortunately. I found these two speakers. I think these are 3 ohms each. I think the 3.3 volt rail on this doesn't work. How about I jump start this power supply? I have another power supply out of frame. This is 12 volts. You can hear it there. It's a bunch of ATX power supplies in series with the grounds on the secondary side removed so they don't short. 750 watt power supply um, in there and this is 12 volts and I'm going to connect it to the 5 volts of this and see what happens. What happens if I plug this one in? Doesn't look like anything happened. Some of these components are at 33 degrees and considering it's been off for a while I think that did do something. I also heard a very faint crackling. Let's do that again but with the addition of the 3.3 volt rail. I do smell something burning slightly. And I can start to see some smoke. These leads are getting a bit warm. Does it still work? Unfortunately not. So it looks like I've managed to kill this power supply. So grey is power good, so that's the sensing wire. Purple is standby power. I can actually check if the standby power is still fine. White is negative 5 volts and blue is negative 12 volts. So if I connect these to the positive that'll be the wrong polarity and we might get some interesting results with that. And yes, there is still 5 volt on the purple wire. For a split second there, it was powering the fan in the other power supply. Ok, 
okay, I've connected the polarity incorrectly. Let's see what happens. It's a resistor. This wiring harness was blocking it, but a resistor was glowing white hot. So what if I turn this on again? Those are not the sounds it's supposed to be making. Although I suppose you could say it wasn't supposed to be making any sounds to begin with. I feel like a capacitor is just going to jump scare me. you have it this power supply is dead thank you DITX 120 PA amplified that's definitely not hiding something else underneath its skin I'm curious as to how that blew the fuse hopefully that explosion wasn't too shaky as I was holding my phone but now I have both of the minus 5 and minus 12 volt on rails connected let's see what happens And my cable is smoking. And this is um, the test leads to a like a really cheap and bad multimeter. And if I, you see the cross section in this, five of the tiniest strands of not even copper. It's not very good. I'm replacing it with a 7.5 amp uh, two wire mains cord. Ooh, that was a lot more dramatic. This is not Sigma. I've got the 12 volt rail connected in reverse polarity. This power supply will no longer supply any power because I killed it. Um, geez, 89.95. If you enjoyed this video like share and subscribe and leave a comment down below for any recommendations of what I should do um, with electronics in general